Good morning, everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Tina Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited today because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how I make an amazing breakfast scramble. I like to call it smothered and covered. It's so good, does not require a lot of ingredients, and if you make them Gina Young style, it's going to be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You all never had my breakfast scramble before. You better make yourself. Here's what you're going to need. Right here, we have some lovely vegetables. We have a green bell pepper, a nice red tomato, and we have onion. We have smoked sausage. Feel free to use any kind of breakfast meat that you would like to use. You can use ham, you can use turkey bacon, you can use regular bacon, you can use ground pork sausage. Any breakfast meat that you love, you can put that in your breakfast scramble. Okay, so right here we have some Idaho potatoes that I have washed off and pat dry with a paper towel. You will need parsley, and you know the parsley is just for color. You're going to need some garlic powder, some pepper. Today we're going to use some pink Himalayan salt and then we have some eggs. You will need cheese and honestly guess what? That's it. But when you put this amazing ingredients together it turns out to a masterpiece that everyone loves make sure your hands are impeccably clean let's get started with this really quick and simple yet so tasty recipe so the first thing that i want to do is i want to go in and chop up these veggies make sure when you bring your veggies home you always want to wash them wash off those pesticides and then you never know who's handled your veggies you know before you've brought them home all right so i think let's see i'll cut just a little bit more i love peppers inside of my fried potatoes are you all a person that loves peppers and onions in your fried potatoes i can't make fried potatoes without peppers and onions it just really brightens up the whole dish so we're going to chop up these peppers just like so you can slice yours if you like it's really up to your discretion <clears throat> all right and keep in mind like i said earlier feel free to use any type of breakfast meat that you love all right we're going to chop this up just like so i am so excited there's nothing like saturday morning waking up to a nice beautiful breakfast that everyone loves you know we got the coffee going the house smells amazing housework is done and i'm happy i woke up in a great mood early this morning and said i'm gonna go downstairs make some nice breakfast and do a video for you all absolutely all right so now that we have our bell pepper chopped now it's time to tackle this here onion I like a lot of onions in my fried potatoes so we're gonna put a nice amount in all right let's get this outer in hopes that I won't go crying guys I just hate when I peel these onions on camera and my eyes start the water. It's like the worst. But I need those onions. I live for onions. <laughs> I love the taste of them in my fried potatoes. It's definitely a must. All right, let me get these peels off of my cutting board. All right, and we'll continue. Let's slice these up. Just like so, keeping your digits in. You don't want to cut your digits off. All right. Now, I usually put in the onions and bell peppers together because they cook around about the same time. But the key to successful fried potatoes is you don't want to put your onions and bell peppers in too early. I'll let you know the perfect time to put your onions and bell peppers in.
just like so here in a second I'll be right back one so we have these veggies chopped up just like so and now we're gonna go in and chop up our beautiful tomato if you're a person that's not a fan of tomatoes feel free to put in any type of vegetables that you love when I'm making these recipes in this kitchen I want you all to think about what ingredients do you and your family like because if there's something that you don't enjoy just omit it from the whole recipe that way you can enjoy the recipe as well you know if I put hot peppers in something you don't have to use it okay make it so you can like it or you can enjoy it quick hands all right so now let's chop up our tomato I'm gonna chop up this full tomato because I'm going to use the tomato for something a little later. But by far, I am not using all of this tomato in this breakfast dish this morning. Okay? Perfect. All right, beautiful cut tomato. Just like so. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in and chop up our potatoes. And what I like to do with my potatoes when I make fried potatoes, I like to parboil them. I like to start the cooking process on the potato. That way we're not frying potatoes forever. Sometimes fried potatoes can take forever in a day. And I don't have all that time for that. We're going to cut these potatoes. We're going to rinse them off with cold water until the water turns nice and clear. That means we've rinsed off a lot of the unwanted starch. And then we're going to boil them in salted water just for around about maybe nine minutes just to start that cooking process we're going to drain them well and then we're going to fry them so now that i have my tomatoes just like so let's get started on our potatoes i want to take this time to wipe down my cutting board and i'm going to chop up some potatoes I'm going to do the potatoes off camera and I'll be right back. So now that we have all of our potatoes nice and chopped up, let's make our way over to the sink so we can rinse off the starch. Come on. All right. So now I'm just going to use cold water. And I want to show you just how cloudy the water will be when you first start to wash your potatoes off. So let's take a peek down. Can you see just how cloudy your water is? That's not what you want. That's unwanted starch that's in there. Let's rinse these potatoes until your water comes nice and clear. And I find when I do this that the potatoes, they fry up just perfectly. They have a nice, beautiful crispiness to them when you fry them once you take off that starch. And sometimes I have to rinse them four or five times. And I'm okay with that. It's not hard work. <laughs> All right, let's rinse it a couple more times. And you will see that the water each time is starting to get nice and clear. You can see that much more clear. I'll probably rinse one or two more times. All right, let's see what this one is looking like right here. Almost there, we're just about there. Be patient, having patience in that kitchen is gonna give you amazing food. Trust me when I tell you this. All right, this is our last rinse. We have nice clear water. That's what you're looking for just like so and now we're going to take these potatoes we're going to put them in a pan of cold salted water we're going to boil them for around about nine minutes so now that our potatoes have been washed off we've put them in water this is cold water always start with cold water and you want to salt your water anytime you're making pasta you're making rice or potatoes salt that water and it gives the potatoes a great flavor not too much all right so now let's take this time to cut up your sauces if you're that person that's going to use uh, pork bacon go ahead and get your bacon to frying up okay because you're going to chop your bacon up or you could just crumble it up if you're going to make ground breakfast sausage start frying that up as well okay in this case i'm using the smoked sausage that is absolutely amazing you can actually use the kielbasa 
sausage as well. When we think about breakfast meat here at the Young's house, this is my go-to. This smoked sausage is amazing. It has so much flavor and my family absolutely adores the sausage. This is a sausage that we love. We do love the Bob Evans and the Jimmy Dean, but this is what I like in my breakfast scramble. And this breakfast scramble is not going to be baked. No, it's not going to be baked. I've showed you all how to make a baked, you know, like breakfast scramble. But this one, everything is done on top of the stove. And then you just kind of mix everything in. And you have an amazing breakfast that was really quick and simple. All right. So I'm just going to continue to cut a few more. And then I just might dice the pieces down a little bit smaller. We don't want huge pieces in with our potatoes. So I'm going to use half of this one and we're going to chop down the meat a little bit more. That's all we're going to use and so we're going to do just like this and then we're going to fry it up. See that there? Perfect pieces for this breakfast dish. I hope you all are having an amazing day today as well as a great work, a great weekend. Spit it out, Gina. You know what you're trying to say. I do. I wish you all are having an amazing weekend. All right, here's this. I'm going to continue to chop up this sausage here, and I'll be right back. Everyone, so we have our sausage that we've cut up right here in our pan, and you can see that it's starting to fry up. What you're looking for is you're looking for a beautiful golden brown color. Can you all see this? Let me show you this one here. Can you see that color? That's the color that you want to achieve all over these beautiful sausages. And never mind these sausages right here. These sausages for, are for me because I'm starving. It's early morning at the Young's house and I just can't wait. So I have those two pieces. Fry them up for myself so I can eat while I'm cooking. <laughs> and then over here on the main stove, we have our potatoes. Potatoes are covered with foil. We're gonna take them out of the pan here in about five minutes or so because they would have boiled for around about nine to 12 minutes. They're not gonna be soft. They just have barely started to cook. Hey everyone, take a peek down in these beautiful smoked sausages. This is the color that you want to achieve. They taste its best when they're nice, beautiful, and golden brown. I mean, honestly, they're great if you just give them a nice saute, just a quick saute, if you boil them. But when you get that color right there, the flavor is just amazing. So that that's what we've achieved. And you see, I didn't put any extra oil in the pan. The sausage already has oil in it. So now I'm, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna take that beautiful meat and we're gonna put it right here onto this plate and then we'll be ready to incorporate it into the dish once our potatoes are done. Now let's make our way over to the sink because our potatoes are done. We're going to drain them. Okay everyone, so we're here at the sink. Our potatoes are done. Take them out of the hot water, drain them in a colander. I want you all to see what they look like. Let's kind of fan away some of the smoke a little bit. You see that? They're not fully cooked. They're just, just starting to cook. All right, I want to drain them well because we're going to make our way over to this sink. We're going to throw these in some hot oil. Come on this way, guys. So right here, I have a pan that has a little bit of cooking oil. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our potatoes in this pan and we want to get a nice, beautiful golden brown color. So we're going to do that. Stand back a little bit. You're going to get a little bit of splattering naturally because the potatoes were boiled in water and water and oil sizzles. Okay, so just kind of get them in there quickly, just like so, and then you're fine. The sizzling is gone. They're going to calm down really quickly. So make sure you drain them as much as you can. We'll give them a nice shake around. And I don't like to season my potatoes until the end of the cooking process because I find when I season my potatoes too early with the salt, the salt just draws out water and causes you to have a fried potato that's soft. 
soft fried potatoes are amazing, but I like my fried potatoes nice and crispy. Okay, so this is going to be cooked on a medium high heat. We're going to keep a good eye on them. You don't want to walk too far away from your stove. Okay, here you can see that we're starting to get some beautiful golden brown color on our potatoes. And that beeping noise that you hear in the background is my oven because we're going to make some nice beautiful biscuits to go along with our breakfast bake. So let me show you these potatoes. Can you see where they're just barely starting to get golden brown? That's what we're wanting. Beautiful color. I'm so happy my house smells so good. Nothing like Saturday morning having a breakfast scramble. Tina Young style. Let's go over this way and get started on our biscuits. No, I'm not making homemade biscuits. They're not going to be homemade. But I do have a video you could watch if you wanted to see how Gina Young makes homemade biscuits. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to use these grains. And these are the flaky layers. And what we're going to put on our biscuits will be apple butter. Have you ever had apple butter? Let me know in the comment section below if you grew up on apple butter. I know I did. I grew up on apple butter. I love it so much I can just take a spoon, dip it down into this bad boy and just go at this jar. But we're going to use that apple butter for these amazing biscuits here. All right, come on, don't scare me. Okay, normally it scares the crap out of me when I open these things. And I know you all laugh at me, but it's true. All right, we're just going to get this in a baking dish, just like so. And we're going to put these in the oven on 350 degrees. Let's see, come on out for me. <laughs> come on out, biscuit. All right so excited are these the honey ones okay i knew they were honey because i could just smell the beautiful honey smell all right i feel like uh, honestly that i can fit one more in all right we'll do this just like so and when these come out we're going to just lather them with a nice amount of butter i'll put this in the oven by itself we're not going to waste that Let's get this in the oven, 350 degrees. Let's go. In the oven we go. My oven is nice and clean. Right on the middle rack. Let's take a peek in at these beautiful potatoes once again. Oh yes, everything's starting to happen very quickly. And normally what I like to do, I like to start adding the onions and bell peppers once I start to get a nice beautiful golden brown color on one side of the potatoes. I'm going to let the potatoes cook for maybe about eight more minutes and then we'll start to add in the onions, the bell peppers, and then very quickly the potatoes will be done. And I'm going to share with you all how quick and simple it is to make Gina Young style breakfast scramble. Make yourself. Okay everyone, now that we have some gorgeous color on these potatoes, it's safely, it's okay to put your seasoning on. Any seasonings that you love, that's what you're going to put on your potatoes. When I make potatoes, salt, pepper, and garlic powder does the trick for me. All right, you can put a little Old Bay seasoning on there. Old Bay seasoning is amazing on fried potatoes. And a little bit of paprika if you like for color. This is my salt. We're going to go in with the garlic powder. Oh, yeah. Don't be afraid to season. And then we're going to move around those potatoes so that that seasoning can get well incorporated all over those potatoes. Okay, so the next step we're going to do, see how we're getting that gorgeous color? That's what you're looking for. Beautiful color. Work that wrist, Gina. All right, beautiful. And so now we're going to go in with our onions. I'm going to separate the onions. I love cutting my onions nice and thick for fried potatoes for some reason, but you can cut your small. You don't have to use them. Remember, make it your recipe when, you know, all depending on what your family members like. Lots of onions in mine. All right, bell peppers right there on top. Don't mix them in yet. Let that other side start to get nice, beautiful, and golden brown, and then we'll come back We'll give it a nice stir, and then we'll mix in our peppers and onions. Keep in mind, you don't want to cook the potatoes so much to where you make your onions 
and your green peppers too soggy. We don't want soggy vegetables in with our fried potatoes. Okay, let's, just like so, just give them a nice shake every once in a while. We'll start to see a beautiful golden brown crust on the bottom side of the potatoes and that'll be the indication that it's time to give them a turn. Be back. Okay, everyone, I feel like it's time to check our potatoes. Let's go in with our spatula, being really gentle. You don't want to break up your potatoes or mash them. And what I love about the way I make fried potatoes, you can see in this pan there's not oil. You don't want to see a pool of oil in the bottom of your pan when you're frying potatoes. The last thing that you want to taste on earth is oily potatoes. It's like the worst. So just all you need is a little bit of oil. The potatoes will soak up the oil and they will continue to cook from the oil that they've actually soaked up in. All right, so now we're mixing in those beautiful veggies. We're getting some amazing color. I'm gonna turn my pan down just like so. And I wanna taste one of these potatoes to see if I'm happy with the seasoning. I'm gonna go in for this one right there. All right, let's give it a taste. Mm-hmm, mm, mm. mm. Potatoes are nice and soft. They have amazing flavor. I feel like I need a little bit more garlic powder. Let's put some in there. Mmm, perfectly seasoned. That right there is gonna do the trick. Go ahead and mix in that extra garlic powder. Oh yeah, and everything happens very quickly from here. Mmm, make yourself. Be right back. Everyone, take a look at our potatoes. They are done and they look and smell amazing. Check them out. Look at this. That is the beautiful color we want. This is how you want your veggies to be, where they still have some nice bite and they're nice and vibrant. The longer you cook your veggies, they're gonna start to get mushy and they're gonna lose that beautiful color. So the potatoes, done. Let's turn this burner off. Let's check on our biscuits in the oven. Biscuits, almost done. They've started to rise, amazing. All right, let's work our way over here. Come on over. All right, now here's what we're gonna do from here. We want to incorporate our beautiful sausage, your bacon, your turkey bacon, turkey sausage, whatever you're gonna use. Go ahead and put it right in with your potatoes. I'm gonna mix it in just like so, being careful not to mash up your lovely potatoes. Now, as far as our tomatoes, don't put the tomatoes into the last minute. At the last minute, we're gonna fold in some parsley for color and the tomatoes. Tomatoes just need to be heated up. They don't need to be cooked. If you cook the tomatoes, they're just gonna turn into mush. All right, so here's this. And now what we wanna do, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. We're gonna keep a good eye on those biscuits as well. So now, we have our eggs. And we have some cheese. The cheese is gonna get folded in at the last minute as well. Are you the person that wants to use the shredded cheese? Or do you like a nice creamy cheese like I do? When I make breakfast, I like to use this cheese here. It's nice and creamy. I feel like it melts a little better. All right, so that's what we're gonna use. Let's crack some eggs. Now, here's a couple of ways you can do this. You can take I'm turning this down just a little bit. You can take your eggs and you can scramble them in a whole separate bowl if you like. I mean, not a bowl. You can um, cook them in a whole separate pan and then incorporate them. Or you can do like I'm gonna do today. We're gonna put our eggs right into this mixture and cook the eggs in with the potatoes. So the eggs kind of stick to every ingredient that's here. I'm gonna show you how. All right, so let's get started. Going in, we're gonna need a roundabout, let's just say six eggs. I'm feeding a nice amount of people this morning. I wanna have, I want everyone to taste that beautiful egg that's gonna be in our breakfast scramble. Covered and smothered. I love to call it that. I believe that I heard that before at Waffle House. And when I go to Waffle House, that's what I order. But it's so funny. I like the way they make it. 
but I know that mine's is better. <laughs> so while I'm eating theirs, I think about eating mine because it's so delicious. <laughs> I should just make it myself, right? Let's see how many we got. Okay, we got six. Let's do seven. All right. Beautiful, beautiful fresh eggs. Okay, so now that that is done, we're going to go right in. We're going to whisk up these bad boys just like so in this manner. Get some nice air in the eggs. Make sure you're whisking in that white and that yolk together. You don't want it to be separate. When I think eggs, I, I, I don't want to see the white in with my you know, mixed in with my scrambled eggs. I like to see the scrambled eggs just yellow only. And to achieve that, you just want to make sure that you mix it up very well. Pretty simple? That's because it is simple. And everything that Gina Young does in this kitchen, you better believe you can do as well. It's going to turn out exactly like mine's would. Now that our eggs are well incorporated, let's go ahead and add them right in with these beautiful fried potatoes these onions and peppers, that sausage. Oh, I'm keeping an eye on my biscuits because they're just about ready to be taken out. Here's what we're going to do. Cooking process is just about done. Let's take our eggs and we want to pour them. Can y'all see? Pour them right into the mixture. Oh, do it this way, guys. And then let me know what you think about this recipe. Oh, it turns out perfect every time. And then we're going to go in and we're just going to move our potatoes and all of our ingredients around until the eggs get nice and gently cooked. You'll start to see those eggs cooking all around those veggies, all around the meat and the potatoes. We'll toss in those tomatoes and cheese and we're done. Everyone, our flaky biscuits are done. Let's put some beautiful Kerry gold butter right onto these biscuits. You cannot have a biscuit without layering it. Just slather it. Is that the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Just slather it in the beautiful butter. Making sure you use salted butter. Oh, listen here. <laughs> and I've taken out my lingonberry sauce. Do you all remember you all bought me lingonberry sauce when I did my video? Um, this lingonberry sauce is absolutely amazing. So my family members is not going to use the apple butter. Feel free to use the lingonberry sauce. It's amazing. Look at this. Like you can't have enough butter on these beautiful biscuits. Let's take a peek in at our scramble. We're almost to the finish line. Come on guys. Back over to the main stove. Scramble, oh, baby, <laughs> baby, this, this right here is what I'm talking about. You hear me? Mm. Breakfast couldn't be more delicious here at the Young's house. It's delicious. Everyone loves it. Family and friends, young and old. You make this for your family, they're going to be happy. Trust me when I tell you this. Oh, yeah. So I want that egg to get fully cooked onto those potatoes. And then we'll add our cheese. We're going to add our tomatoes. I'll be right hey back. Everyone, can you see just how? Let me show you this part right here. Can you see how the egg has baked into those beautiful veggies? It's baked, or not baked, but cooked into those potatoes. Oh, and have surrounded the potatoes with egg goodness. Is that a word? If it's not a word, it's going to be a word today. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do now that our eggs are complete. Throw in some tomatoes if you like. Now I did separate the tomatoes that I'm going to use later for a dish, and I've just taken out just enough for this dish. Okay, so now at this point I'm going to turn this down on a low heat. Very low heat is all we're going to need. But meanwhile, we're going in with this amazing creamy cheese. Oh, <laughs> Whew, this is American cheese that I absolutely adore. It is Kraft Singles, and I love Kraft Singles. <laughs> Use what kind of cheese you love. You know, I'm going to be honest. If you all like pepper jack, 
you know, whatever kind of cheese you like, that's what you're going to use. Just like so, you can leave it on top, put a lid on, and just let it melt down through the middle, or you can fold it in, just like I'm going to do. Once we fold it in, that cheese is going to melt really quickly all over this beautiful dish. And breakfast is served. Okay, so now we're going to go in, give it some attention. Melt that cheese. Oh, baby. Ooh, let me know in the comment section if your mouth has started watering and your stomach started rumbling. Oh, I hope you all enjoyed this video right here. When I come back, we're going to plate this up. We're going to say a nice prayer. I'm going to give you all that first bite. If you all right enjoyed back. this here video today, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, heck, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Absolutely. Let's say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding and all your blessings. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy that you bring us every day, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Let's give you guys a bite. I'm just going to take one bite because I want to be able to sit down and enjoy this with my family. Okay. Now, I know, I know you all are dying. I know you are dying for this gorgeous biscuit with a little bit of that beautiful, gorgeous apple butter. Give this a try. When you put that apple butter on there, you just want to load it on. Taste this and let me know what you think. Go in, guys. Taste that. Yeah. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. 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 Man, talking good. Hold on. I need a fork, guys. I need a fork. Just one quick taste. I want potatoes. I want tomatoes. I want onions and bell peppers and this cheesy, eggy gooiness. Look at this. Taste that. And as always, God bless. Thank you all for watching. Good night. Mm.